Welcome to Brent's Anime Recommendation Corner, where I talk about something I love, and today I'm going to talk about Spring and Chaos. This is a biography of Kenji Miyazawa, who is a famous poet and children's author uh, in Japan in the Meiji era, I believe, uh, in the, show, the, the early Taisho era, that general period, early 20th century, basically. Um... And Kenji Miyazawa, real man, real real author, um, and this is a fictionalized biography of him, particularly because um, everyone in Spring and Chaos is a cat. Um, everyone is an anthropomorphized cat um, in Taisho era Japan. It is directed by Shoji Kawamori of Macross. Escaflone, the inventor of the Valkyrie, that guy made this. And no one's quite sure why. I, I'm kidding. Um, so it, it, it is scenes from the life of Kenji Miyazawa, um, who lived in sort of rural Japan, uh, never um, did very well for himself, was never very successful financially, um, and had... Somewhat of a of a, uh, a rough time, as you, as often happens with uh, with folks. He was a school teacher um, out in rural Japan. He had a big heart for the common person. Um, one of the things he did actually was um, try to sort of expand people's minds, try to expose them to current scientific thought. Um, he tried to kind of show um, the rural farmers how to do like crop rotation and better ways of farming and so forth, which stuck with some people more than others, as you as you might imagine. Um, you see here in this, this screenshot, he was also famous for the fact that he would, he always took, um, carried pen and paper because as he was walking along, he'd suddenly get seized with an idea for a poem, um, like, like a, a word image, and you'd have to like whip this out, almost like in a trance, and like write it down real quick before he forgot it. He had that sort of poet's mind of just suddenly getting, getting caught with something and needing to, to write it down immediately. Obviously, you know, what he wrote down would then get you know, massaged and worked on into a poem. Um, but he had that kind of a thing. And so, um, yeah, this is all about Kenji Miyazawa. And boy, is it weird. It is very much meant to be an art house film. Um, a lot of strong imagery. Um, a lot of, of, of you know, there is no, like, standard camera angle in this film. Um, which makes it just really so fascinating. Um, it has this almost rough aspect to the art. Um, it's obviously very carefully made. Um, but there is a, a directness to the art and the visuals that's kind of hard to explain and hard, hard to, to pin down um, in terms of, like, it's not, it's not anime in any traditional sense. The art style is very distinctive um, and very much intentionally so and very artistic a lot of the time. Um, and you get these wonderful images. In a way, Spring and Chaos is a movie set inside of the mind of a poet. So you get these flights of fancy, of, of strong imagery, as Miyazawa is imagining things, and his, his imagination is kind of taking flight. Um, obviously there's a budget here, like they're, they're really pumping out a lot, a lot of the imagery, but like a lot of art house films, it's distinctive, right? It's not your typical kind of you know, flowy fight scene kind of an animation. Um, partly because he, he has this very distinctive style in his writing that is very poetic, that is a lot of just strong imagery being thrown at you. Um, and as a result, it has this very distinctive pacing. Uh, it's very... Um, it kind of starts and stops. Um, it, it, it moves at a very... at a, an unusual rhythm. Right? It's not your typical kind of movie beginning, middle, end. Although it does have a, a clear progression through. But it's not like, okay, inciting incident, you know, rising action, big climax kind of a story. No, this is the story of a guy who had a... who never published a, a story, I believe, in his life. Um, he did not have a lot of success as a poet, but then be, became a very successful poet after his death and just this is this is his life and it doesn't have a simple Hollywood structure and so it's not presented that way by Kyle Moore which is something I really like about it 
Um, again, very much an art house film. Now, one of the reasons that it has this style, I think, is that um, Miyazawa's arguably most famous story is called Night on the Galactic Railroad. Uh, and that was adapted into an anime film in, I believe, the 80s, where all the characters are cats. Um, and when asked, when somebody asked Shoji Kawamori, why did you make all of these character ca characters cats? Apparently, Kawamori answered, because I discovered that Kenji Miyazawa hated cats. I don't know, man, but that's just what he said. That was his justification for that. Very odd. But it gives it this otherworldly quality, which works very well for Miyazawa's style. None of the Galactic Railroad is about a young man, it's about a boy who's, um, um, he's concerned about his best friend, and then he goes on a train ride, like he, he literally goes up onto a, onto a hillock, a train just sort of comes out of space, and just, just comes out of space, he gets on board this train where his friend is, and they have this train ride through space. If you've seen Galaxy Express, it is a reference back to this story. It is, it is very much inspired by this idea of this train through space in the story. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, Miyazawa ends up in anime a lot. Like, there are a lot of references to Miyazawa stories and, and so forth. This is one of these classic sort of, like, um, The Secret Garden, right? It's one of these kinds of children's authors that just everyone read as a kid. Um, um, the music in this is also very distinctive. Um, I can't even begin to describe it. it it's, it's, it goes all over the place in a really good way, where it's very distinctive to the, the approach of the film, um, but it's not like your traditional symphonic kind of music. Um, a lot of kind of traditional Japanese instruments, as I recall, very interesting. Um, the dub in this is, I'd recommend the Japanese version. Um, the English dub is, this is a film about Japanese characters and Japanese characters going through a lot of things. The English dub, um, I think doesn't work as well for this kind of a story. Um, I think it works better in Japanese. I think you kind of feel more for the characters in the Japanese dub. Um, again, not that the English dub does a, a bad job per se, um, but I think I kind of I, I connected with the characters more in the Japanese. Maybe that's just because this is a very Japanese story. Um, that was just kind of my take on it. Um, and yeah, this is again the story of a of a very distinctive Japanese person told in a very distinctive Japanese way, and is definitely memorable. Like, like you'll, you'll finish this and you, you won't forget it anytime soon. Um, not for everybody, obviously, but a beautiful artistic tribute to an artistic man. That's Spring and Chaos. <laughs>